we're going to talk about how to solve exact equations, by which we mean first order differential equations written in this form. Though there, we could also use the differential form for an equation of this type, which would be m of xy dx plus n of xy dy equals zero. Whenever we see this, we'll mean the same thing as this first form. What does it mean to say that this is exact? It means that the left side here is just a derivative of some function c of xy with respect to the independent variable x. So if, remember, x is our independent variable, we're thinking of y as a function of x. So we can think of c of xy as a function just of x. Using, think of x as a function of x, it's just x, and y is some unknown function of x. We can differentiate that with respect to x, and using the chain rule for functions of two variables, what we get is dc dx times dx dx, which is 1, plus dc dy times dy dx. In other words, we'll write that as c sub x plus c sub y dy dx. So when we say that the equation written in this form above here is exact, we mean it's of this form, c sub x is the m, c sub y is the n, for some function c. Well, how can we tell if that happens? Well, before we start getting some general conditions to be able to tell exactly when that happens, let's look at some examples. Here's the equation y plus x dy dx equals zero. Remember, we could also write that as y dx plus x dy equals zero. That's a beautiful looking first order differential equation in differential form. Just out of the blue, I'll tell you, we could recognize this as the derivative of x times y. So check that in your heads. How do you differentiate x times y with respect to x? You would get, by the chain rule, you'd get y plus x times dy dx. So going from this equation, I will integrate both sides. And on the left side, I would get xy. On the right side, I integrate and I could get zero or technically an arbitrary constant c. There would be an arbitrary constant associated with the integral on the left as well. We put, put them both on the right and we get x, y equals c. That implies we can solve for our function y as c over x. Remember here, c is an arbitrary constant. So the general solution to this very simple equation differential equation is y equals c over x, you can check that yourself. And remember, always check your work. What is dy dx? It's going to be minus c over x squared. So if you look at y plus x dy dx, you'll see immediately that you really do get zero and that this equation holds. Now, at this point, you might look and say, okay, how in the world did I get that xy? We'll talk about that in just a couple minutes. Let's look at one more example like this. Here we have y plus 2x, that's our m plus x plus 2y dy dx equals 0. This is our n, is the x plus 2y. And here, I'll, again, I'll just tell you the answer. We're going to use c of xy equals x squared plus xy plus y squared. And you can check in your head that the partial of c with respect to x is exactly m here. y plus 2x, you get 2x plus y plus zero when you differentiate with respect to x, and the partial of c with respect to y is just this function n, it's x plus 2y. So what does that mean? That means when we integrate the left side, we get exactly x squared plus xy plus y squared. And so the general solution to this differential equation is what we get when we integrate the left side We'll get this plus an arbitrary constant. We integrate the right side, we get an arbitrary constant. Put those constants on the right, and we get the general solution. Now this here is just an implicit solution. We don't have 
a formula for y explicitly as a function of x. Though you could actually get one by completing the square with in y squared plus xy. I'll leave that to you guys to do, because right here an implicit solution in many cases will do. Can you check your work when you have an implicit solution? Well, just use implicit differentiation and differentiate both sides and you'll see immediately that this equation is true. But don't just trust me, check it yourself. So what we've already said is in order for this equation, first order differential equation in this standard form to be exact, we need it to be in the form c sub x plus c sub y dy dx. So the m has to be c sub x and the n has to be c sub y. So I'll remind you what we needed was we need a function c of two variables x and y with c sub x equals m and c sub y equals n. So now we'll address the question, how can we tell if there exists such a function c? That's the first question. And the second question is, how can we find such a thing if it exists? And you've probably actually come across this exact problem before, uh, probably in your Calc 4 classes, when you dealt with vector fields. At this point here, we're talking about, we would be talking about vector fields in two-dimensional space. Do you remember this problem that you had then? Let's say you have a vector field f is p q and we say f is conservative if this vector field f is the gradient of some function little f of two variables x and y and of course the gradient of little f is this function f sub x f sub y is this vector function f sub x and f sub y. So the question of is this vector field conservative is really very much like the question is this differential equation exact. Here to tell whether this vector field is conservative we just have to know is there a function f of x y with f sub x equals p and f sub y equals q. And of course, in Calc 4, we learned the answer. And the answer is, there's a simple test for when such a function f exists. And what is that test? f is conservative under nice conditions, which we'll talk about more in the next slide, just standard niceness hypotheses. F is conservative when P sub Y is equal to Q sub X. And why should it be necessary that P sub Y equals Q sub X? Well, remember P is F sub X, so that P sub Y is just f sub x, y, the partial of f with respect to x first and then with respect to y. And q has to be f sub y, so q sub x will be f, y, x. And under nice conditions for a function f, these mixed partial derivatives will be equal. So what that tells us is if there's any hope that this vector field is conservative, we absolutely must have p sub y equals q sub x. The really nice thing is that when p sub y equals q sub x, you can go backwards and say, yes, the vector field really is conservative. There exists in this, in the Calc 4 language, a potential function f, such that the vector field capital F is just the gradient of your potential function. We can be a little bit more precise now and talk about what those niceness conditions mean. As long as these functions m, n, and the partial derivatives m sub y and n sub x are all continuous, not just at a single point, but in some open rectangle, that open rectangle 
is the rectangle defined by x is in some in open interval from alpha to beta and y is in some other open interval from gamma to delta. As long as these functions are all continuous in such a rectangle, then we can say that this differential equation is exact an exact differential equation in that rectangle exactly when m sub y equals n sub x. In other words, this condition m sub y equals n sub x is not only necessary, but it's also sufficient to make this exact. So another way of saying that is there exists a function c satisfying c sub x equals m and c sub y equals n, if and only if m and n satisfy m sub y equal n sub x. And all that is under these same hypotheses that m, n, m sub y, and n sub x are all continuous in some nice rectangle.